So let's begin this lesson by checking in on our app component. Currently, the app component is performing the logic of mapping over our tacos array right here and returning an array of taco card components. And right here, it's performing a very similar logic of iterating over our burritos array and producing an array of burrito cards. And what I want to do in this lesson is begin a little bit of a refactor. And that is going to consist of moving these pieces of logic to their own respective components. So I'm going to create a tacos component that's going to store the logic of mapping over an array and producing a bunch of taco cards, and then also create a burritos component that's going to be responsible for mapping over an array and producing a whole bunch of burrito cards. And just like we did with taco card and burrito card, we're gonna talk about the kind of abstractions and solutions that we can utilize in React to move those two components closer together and potentially become one later on. I want to show you how we, as always, begin with the duplication and identify the problem and the repetition and then a couple approaches to how we can fix it within React. The key takeaway from this lesson and the upcoming ones is that a React component can be more than visual. It can serve a purpose besides just rendering JSX. Sure, technically a component must return some bit of JSX, but that is actually a very flexible definition because for example, the JSX that a component returns can simply be its children. In other words, we can simply return props.children and we'll render whatever the parent gives us. And the reason we might want to do something like that is to allow the component to focus on some other responsibility, maybe like mapping over an array or performing a calculation or making an API call to collect data. We of course begin with our components with the mindset of it being some kind of visual thing on the screen. And that is still accurate, right? But as we briefly mentioned earlier, it also helps to expand that definition to enhance it and to start thinking of components almost like plain functions that can do additional things. And that will allow a component to be reusable in ways that aren't just strictly divs or h1s on the screen. It's kind of a tough concept to explain in words, but I hope as we practice the code in the upcoming lessons that you get a sense of the more dynamic ways that we can uh, utilize components. So we're going to see some return values that are going to be a little bit more clever and interesting. So let me show you an example right now in this lesson. I'll begin by creating a new component, which I will call tacos. So right here, I will create tacos.jsx. And I'm gonna drag this file over here on the right. And I'm immediately going to import our taco card component from the taco card file in the same directory. And here I will define a tacos component. For now, I'll just provide the function body. And then immediately below, I will export default tacos. And what I want this component to do is accept a prop. I'm gonna call that prop items. So let me write here, destructure a prop called items. Again, those names are up to us. So let's assume that the parent will give this component an items prop. And this component's responsibility will be to map over items, which we will assume to be an array, and return a taco card component for every element within that items array. So the code is basically going to be what we have right here. The only difference is rather than using the literal term tacos, I'm just gonna use a more higher level generic term uh, like items. And this is intentional by the way, because I want to avoid getting too far down in the weeds and naming things too specifically, because the more generic that we can name things, the easier it is sometimes to identify their commonalities. We could totally call this tacos by the way, but items also works, so let's stick with items for now. So right here, what I'm going to do is simply say, return items, and then I want to perform the map method on items. So I'm literally just gonna copy and paste this map code right here and paste it right here, like so, okay? So what makes this super interesting is that this return value is unlike any other return value we've had before. Previously, we've always returned a top level HTML element or JSX element or component, right? In this case, we're actually returning an array of components, an array of JSX, but that is totally valid. We were able to utilize that syntax here and we're similarly able to utilize the syntax here. 
And the reason we're able to do that is because React knows that whenever we give it an array of JSX, it's just going to render it sequentially in order, just like it did right here. So this component will produce an array of JSX, and whenever we render tacos in a parent component, well, then React is just going to say, okay, tacos is giving me an array of three things, or the tacos component is giving me an array of five JSX things. I'm just going to lay them out here the exact same way that compared to as if it was like an H1 or a div, right? Nothing wrong with returning an array. Once again, an example of how our return values can be a little bit more interesting than something like a top level JSX element. So the next thing I want to do, of course, is repeat the exact same logic for a component called burritos. So right here, I'm going to create a new component in source. I'm going to call it burritos.jsx. And the logic is going to be very similar. So I'm going to import my burrito card component from burrito card. I'm going to define a component called burritos. I'm going to assume that it's going to take a prop called items, which will be an array. And then in the body of this component, I'm going to return the array that is generated by calling the map method on my items prop and taking that array and producing an array of JSX. Except for every element in my items array, I of course want to create a burrito card component instead of a taco card component. That is the difference between our tacos and burritos component. So right here, of course, I'm just gonna copy what we have right here with map, place it right here. All right, and that looks good to me. And then of course, I want to export default the burritos component. All right, so now we have two components and they both accept the same prop called items and then they return an array of a certain component, taco card or burrito card based on that items array that we give it as a prop. So now we can simplify a little bit of the code in our app component. So I'm gonna to scroll to the top here and I'll begin by importing our two new components. So right here, I'm gonna import tacos from tacos and then I'm also going to import burritos from burritos. Okay, and I'm gonna scroll down to where we were previously rendering everything with map. And now rather than, th than having this kind of technical jargon right here, we have extracted that logic to these respective components on the right hand side. So let's compare the code side by side. Rather than doing tacos.map, instead I'm just going to render my tacos component. And what does my tacos component need? It needs an items prop. So right here, I'll declare my items prop. And what does items need to be? It needs to be an array so that the tacos component could call the map method on that array and produce an array of taco card components. So of course, the items here is going to be my tacos array right here. So I'm simply going to pass in tacos right here. So this code on line 47 is identical basically to the code we have on lines 49 through 51 because we've basically extracted the logic of iteration of mapping to its own component. And that may actually make the code a lot cleaner, right? Because the code above on line 47 reads a little bit simpler and the component is kind of leaner, uh, smaller, and we've extracted the responsibility for mapping to a separate component. Is it overkill? You could potentially make the argument for something this small, but it is moving us in a direction of smaller components, each of which is serving a smaller purpose, right? So this code now that was three lines can now be consolidated to a single tacos com component that communicates that we're rendering a bunch of tacos. All right, so right here, we're going to repeat the exact same logic with our burritos component. So right here, burritos, and the burritos component similarly expects an items prop, so we have to give it an items prop, and that is going to be an array so that we can call the map method on the array that is flowing in as an items prop into the burritos component. And that array, of course, is going to be this burritos array right here. So I'm going to feed in burritos. And that, of course, allows us to get rid of this code right here. So now we've simplified app. It kind of becomes a little bit easier to read where we just have a bunch of tacos and a bunch of burritos. And we've extracted the mapping logic and the knowledge of what kind of component to render for each element in the respective array to two separate components, tacos and burritos. And as you might guess, in the upcoming lessons, we're also going to work to consolidate these two components into one. And I hope that this is, once again, getting you to open your mind up to the idea of what a return value can be from a component. It doesn't always strictly have to be a top level HTML element. It can be an array of JSX. It can be, for example, just simply returning props.children and rendering child content 
while wrapping it in some additional calculation logic or uh, some additional data fetching logic. A component can do something and do that responsibility within the React ecosystem, and it doesn't always have to return uh, you know, a, a strictly visual element of the UI that is an HTML element. There's ways to be clever and creative with what a component is doing, just like we did in this lesson, where our two new components are returning arrays of JSX, and the component's responsibility is not to, you know, go deep into HTML uh, nested uh, element structures, but rather to perform iteration logic, mapping logic, to know to generate an array of a certain type of element. All right, so just getting more creative here with our use of components. That's all there is to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.